We're in the middle of a snowstorm up here in New England, and there's nothing like starting off a video the way it should be. That was the FMO fun run, and we have so much content to run through on this episode. We have four fun runs in four days, all at the beginning of 2022. So stay tuned, because this is episode number two, and it's chock-a-block full of awesome fun run content. As you guys are used to now, let's start the story. But first, how the heck did we get here? In short, we left Big Pine Key, we traveled about 300 miles in two days, we visited a really cool city called Everglades City, which really isn't a city, more like a town, stuck in the middle of nowhere. If you're interested in that, go ahead and see episode one. And now, we've come all the way up to Fort Myers Beach to meet up with our good friends and start this epic adventure as a group. Alright, so what are we doing here? What do we got? We wine and dine. Kelsey, you up with that? Oh, I'm so happy I had my girl with me. See you right there. How did the, how did the white one, how did the white one come These fun runs are about fast boats, but at the end of the day, it's mostly about friendship. And here's what I mean by that. Sarah and I really didn't have a place to stay that night originally. There was just, everything was super booked up. And we didn't have any dockage. But before you know it, word got out, and Sarah and I ended up staying in one of the coolest pads in Cape Coral with some of the coolest people you'll ever meet and I ended up finding out exactly how I want my dream bathroom. Put the phone down, let's be good guests, stop. Oh my God. Um, did you see those shades come down as we came in? No. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, you guys. Oh my god! Check it out. That's how to live. Holy crap. Check it out. And before you know it, it's time for an early rise because we have to go from Cape Coral all the way up to Sarasota. The fun run starts at 11, so we gotta get moving. Now, every captain has their thing, and for me, it's always weight. I just can't stand dragging a bunch of weight around when you don't have to. So when I saw that Kelsey brought a curling iron, mm, I felt like she deserved a little bit of, well, recognition. What is that? What? What is that? I don't even know what that is. Why are we taking that? I know, I was cooling down still. What? Are we taking curling irons now, Mike? Honey, that's not a curling iron, that's a hair straightener. And I packed one too. And you've had one on every single fun run we've ever been on. This is going to be awesome. The sun, the sun is just literally just peeling up. We've got a pretty uh, foggy wind windshield and outlet. Let's fuel right now, and then it's all the way to Sarasota to get to the run before 11. After hooking up with our friends and making our group even bigger, we then head to Sarasota. Now you can go either inside or outside, or kind of do a combination of the two, depending on weather. Why not just jump out both and even though we do love organized fun runs, there's nothing like just being in a pack of go-fast boats with one destination, the sun is rising, the morning is fresh, and the day is ready to be conquered. Well, it was perfect timing. We roll into Sarasota with about 15 minutes to spare. There's a huge group of boats that have collected out in front of the Hyatt. And what's really interesting to me is that after two days of boating and 400 miles under our belt, we are finally ready to start the first fun run of this whole four fun run adventure. 390, this, this 390 literally. How many hours on that 390? Five now. Five hours. So breaking it in. Yeah. Facebook Live, don't say anything bad. Mikey's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> now you'll notice when we actually begin this fun run that Sarah and I kind of lay back. And the reason for that is this is our first Facebook Live event. 
we didn't quite know how it was gonna go and it was a little tricky but at the end of the day we left the video up online and it got over 700,000 views in the first couple hours so that was really cool and unexpected but it made us drive a little more conservative and we were still in prevent defense because we have three more fun runs to do after this one and we still have to get home thank you you're alive you don't have blonde hair so uh, you know you so you can get into these runs but not you know it's the price range you'll notice throughout this video i'm talking as i'm driving and that's because i'm narrating for the facebook live feed that sarah's holding can you show me on the map where we're heading so i can help nab a little bit better yeah so we're gonna head up here we are not gonna be leading this pack we're gonna go in through here we're gonna go in through here. That's all Sorry, 25 guys, mile an hour right there. Uh, we're gonna go up here. That's all. That's all 25 mile an hour right there. Or up here. And we're basically running an inside track from Sarasota to to Tampa. And it's about 60 miles. Here we go. So you can see, look at all these boats starting it up. These guys are gonna start getting lit up. We're gonna hear some thick ass motors come to light. All right, that was the start of the Munion run. Now, I'm not gonna show every single second of every run. It's just, it's just, it's just no sense in it. It gets really boring. So what I'm gonna do is just show the highlights. It might be the, the beginning of the run. It might be the end, it might be the middle, who knows, but I'll just show you guys the highlights so we can keep this film tight and with tons of content. So we've done quite a few fun runs and I can honestly say that we've never hit a fog wall like the one we did on the Munion. Now, this ended up being kind of a reoccurring thing through the whole week. Every single fun run up there ended up having fog. It certainly did add a layer of complexity. And, well, at these speeds, pucker factor. A lot of folks coming from Starboard heading into this channel. Sarah's part of the channel. Yeah, we got a little bit of a... So that was Dallin Ann. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a 100 mile an hour turn right there. So I can't see the next marker. This is actually... first run run we've ever done yeah, in a fog bank. Wow. So this is uh, interesting. I'm going to zoom in. Zoom in. All right, maybe, maybe the, hold on. So you cannot hit a movie. You can break a pop, a prop door into a coconut. A coconut, I call it the golden coconut. And eventually the fog just gets too thick and we all slow down to a nice comfortable speed where you can see in front of your boat a nice safe distance. It does amaze me somehow we never lost my phone. I hope there's not another fun run coming back at us. Alright. Okay, still aiming for Okay, what is that? That's a big cruiser. Is that a cruiser? Yep. Alright, we're gonna bring it down. This is the 25 mile an hour zone. And now we all slow down for the 25 mile an hour zone, just in time with all this fog. And we all have just a little bit more experience under our belt. We're gonna go ahead and bring it down to 25 miles an hour, Mikey. Your train's still at 30. What's that? We're gonna go ahead and bring it down to 25 miles an hour. 25, you know. Oh, this is, uh, this is crazy. This yeah. fog bank, I've never I seen this before. This makes me nervous. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and open her up. You guys get to get her. 
I did want to mention this some of you seasoned captains and boaters might be like what the heck red right return everyone knows that it's standard and while it is standard what's not standard is knowing if you're coming into port or leaving port especially when you have a string of islands or or long inland rivers with exits to the ocean on either end so for safety I always like to ask my co-captain my navigator my wife am I on the right side of things all right so here we're going through a drawbridge I'm not sure why raising the oh, drawbridge for us. Wow. Hi, Barbados. Hi, Barbados. Kelsey, you are natural at that. Mikey, can you break your boat every fun run for us? <laughs> I actually secretly did it, so we can come on. After some bridges and some slow zones, we're about halfway there, and we finally get to open it up into Tampa Bay. And we get some good numbers, but you gotta watch out for some of those cruiser wakes. And we're about to find out why. Here it is. This is why I always look way ahead for cruiser wakes. Hitting a four or five foot wall of water at 100 miles an hour can really do damage. Luckily, I saw the cruiser here and I slowed down to about 60 or 70 miles an hour where we could handle it safely. If you rewind that, you'll see that that's about two seconds in the air, which isn't a big deal at 70. But can you imagine if we hit that at 130? It would have been ugly. And if you look to my port side, you'll actually see that cruiser plowing one hell of a wall of water. And just like that, it was like magic. The sun appeared, the boats were rafted, and we were there to have a fantastic lunch. This is what Go Fast Boating is all about. Girls. Love ya. I wanna do a quick shout out to Ed and Maritza, who drove an awful long way to meet me and Sarah. You guys really touched our hearts. Thank you, and it was a pleasure to meet you. After a decent lunch at the Hula Club, it was time to head back. We had been running hard all day since six in the morning. We had put on hundreds of miles, and for that night, it was time to just lick our wounds, go to bed early, and recharge for the next day, which was legendary aerial photographer Pete Bowden's long bow key fun run. Now this fun run specifically designed to get some really cool shots from a helicopter of all of these boats. The problem with this day is we hit a wall of fog again, just like the day before, but this time impenetrable by the helicopter. So we had to turn the fun run around and it ended up being kind of a mess out of the inlet of Sarasota. And this is how it went down. Small boat.
pretty intense a lot of traffic a lot going on we were being careful we weren't going super fast but you don't have to be to have all that stuff kind of bottleneck in to one place and then on top of that you lose your vision out front due to fog so we were pretty conservative we slowed right down but it doesn't mean it wasn't another pucker fest and that was pretty much the fun run we did end up going out to lunch at a pretty cool restaurant right in the middle of longboat key that we do want to show you guys So after a quick trip back on the inside where it wasn't that foggy, Pete was able to get some good pictures and we were able to have a really cool lunch. Girls, what are we doing right now? Fixing ourselves. You're fixing yourselves? Is that... <laughs> well, don't be dorks about it. <laughs> so after a great lunch at the Longboat Key restaurant that I'm not going to bore you with, it was back on the road, or I guess back on the water. Because it was New Year's Eve, we're in Sarasota, and we finally get to find out where Gizmo came from. So it's kind of like the Days of Thunder, I guess, where Sean and I are just really competitive. We'll compete at anything. And for me, I don't have the finesse. I just have the bulk. I was a football player. So it all started with a bet the second I saw that hammer. And the bet was whoever comes home with the biggest stuffed animal wins. And the other must wear that stuffed animal on the bow of their boat for the next fun run. Okay, so I might have gone overboard a little bit, but in my mind, I was not going to put Sean's stuffed animal on the bow of my boat the next fun run. I'd rather slip a disc, which might have happened. But after a very competitive night, David did not slay the giant. Kels, you must feel proud of your man. Well, I saw my doggies in the way. <laughs> so that meant Sean had to put my stuffed animal on the bow of his boat for the next fun run. But here's where things unexpectedly flipped upside down. Gizmo was cool as hell, and everybody wanted him on their boat. So for the next three days, it ended up being one hell of a custody battle, and the chaos ensued. It's you guys! Cool. So honestly, this, just gonna be honest. So Sean's been working all night at the carnival, which is over there. It's not about size, it's about how you use it. Okay? It's not about size. <laughs> Can you do a Chewbacca call? Huh? Oh! oh like, what did you do? Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, so anyway. Okay, wait, is there, is there a girl who can call? Yeah. 
After what had to be one of the most memorable nights I've had boating, it was time to get going to the next fun run. And somehow it all changed. It was now a badge of honor to have Gizmo on your boat. We just had to figure out how we were going to tie him on and still have him 100 mile an hour plus certified. Look at that, you guys. We're 22 minutes in. We're two minutes over. You guys know the rules. We do 20 minute videos because everybody just doesn't really pay attention after that. So we're going to wrap it up here, but I do want you guys to see what's in next episode. As we roll our theme song, we hope to see you guys out there. Boat safe, boat happy, over and out. Hold on, where, well, where are we? Uh, we're in a channel somewhere in Cape Coral, just following our friends. Yeah. And this guy comes busting out of his house, running down, like busting through the screen door, running. I thought he was gonna yell at us for having too much of a wake. And he's like, how to live? I hope I had a gas if you give me a ride. I'll be right here. <laughs> it is awesome. I mean, all the crap that we go through about just kind of putting it all together, it's, Moments like that that make it worth it. That was cool. <laughs> and finally, we'd like to thank our fans. You guys are the best on earth. We truly mean that. You guys make all this hard work worth every single second. Make sure you look out for episode three when you learn how an 80-year-old tortoise lost us gizmo. Gonna move these mountains.